In this question, we are trying to find an engine that has sufficient power for the car to go up the slope. If the engine is not powerful enough, this car will probably will not make it up the slope and just slide hopelessly back down the hill. Let's highlight the keywords and information for this question. I will highlight any numbers that the question gives us or descriptors of what we are trying to solve. In this question, I will highlight 8% grade. 8 meter elevation gain for each 100 meters traveled and speed of 30 meters per second and power. 8% grade is important to know what the slope the car will be traveling up against as well as the speed of the car as this affects the required power of the engine which is what we're trying to find. I highlighted power as well so that we know what quantity we're looking for. Recall that power has a units of energy per unit time, and knowing the units will help us combine information we have solved to find the quantity we need. We will also use the parameters of a Toyota Corolla as an example which I will also highlight here. These parameters are important because we know that a car is subject to rolling friction and drag. In this case, we also need to think about potential energy because the car is going uphill. I will also highlight the detail about that V is constant, delta K is zero, as it will be important when we discuss the three equations below. W net is equal to delta K plus delta U. This formula means that the net work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy and the change in potential energy. This could also be interpreted as a conservation of energy. Since the speed is constant, the change in kinetic energy is zero. Then the equation would now be W net is equal to delta U. Now let's break down what the network is and what it is composed of. Going back to the question, we are interested in an engine that can compensate for elevation gain, rolling friction, and air drag. This means that the work done by the engine must overcome the potential energy, the energy lost by rolling friction, and the energy lost by air drag. To put this into a formula, it looks like this. W engine is equal to WR plus WD plus delta U where WR is the energy lost by friction, WD is the energy lost by air drag, and delta U is a potential energy. We will need to use this formula to solve this question. Let us first calculate the energy lost by rolling friction each second. We just use one second here because we want to say something about the engine's power, which is the energy use per second. Remember that WR is equal to FR times D, so we need the distance traveled per second. How much would this be? I will let you guys pause the video and attempt the question first before I go over the answer. The answer to this question is hidden in the question itself, which is 30 meters per second. W is equal to F times D, where F is force in newtons and D is distance in meters. In this case, we want our force to be the frictional force. Recall that the formula to calculate the frictional force is FR is equal to mu R times Fn, where mu R is a coefficient of friction and Fn is a normal force. We are given the coefficient of friction in the question, which is 0 0.015. However, we need to find the normal force. Okay, so we know that the Corolla travels 30 meters per second up the slope at an 8% grade. We can find the angle of elevation by using inverse tan, which turns out to be 4.574 degrees. So I draw the vector triangle composing of FG and FN, and I know that this angle is the same angle as the one we found previously. I need to find a value for one of the sides of the triangle, then use trigonometry to find Fn. I know that we can find Fg since Fg is equal to mass times gravity. We know the mass of the car, so we multiply the mass of the car by 9.8 meters per second squared to get Fg. Using cosine, we can find Fn by multiplying Fg by cosine of the angle, which is 4.574 degrees. Now that we have the normal force, we can then use that to calculate the frictional force. 
Since we're given the coefficient of friction, the frictional force is then equal to 0 0.015 times the normal force, Fn. Now that we have the frictional force, we can finally calculate the work done by rolling friction. Let's calculate WD, the work done by drag. We will first calculate the drag force, then use W equals F times D to calculate the work done by drag. Recall the equation for the drag force, where CD is a drag coefficient, rho is the density of the medium, A is a cross-sectional area, and V is a velocity. In putting all the relevant data into the drag force equation, we get the drag force to be 354.73 newtons. Like what we did with the work done with friction, we use W equal to F times D to calculate the work done by drag. Finally, we will calculate the change in potential energy of the car. The main parameter we need to find is the elevation of the car per second. To find this, we need to know the rate at which the 100 meters is covered by the 30 meters per second speed, which means we need to find the x component of the velocity. We already know the angle of elevation, which is 4.574 degrees. Using cosine, we can find the x component of the velocity, which is 29.9 meters per second. Then, by using ratios, 29.9 meters per second divided by 100 meters, then multiplied by the 8 meter elevation will give us the elevation per second. Finally, with what we have calculated, we can find the change in potential energy of the car, which is equal to mgh. Now we can put everything together. Finally, we can add up all the work values we calculated to find the answer. Now that we have the work done by the engine, we need to know the work done per second. To do this, we need to divide the work done by the engine by time. But think back on what we did, because we already did this. The parameters we found, the elevation per second and the distance traveled per second, are both per second. Since we used both parameters in the three energy calculations we made, we can simply divide W engine by time to get what we need, the power of the engine.